One of the things, too, and I don't want to seem uh, too, uh, too cold here in the presentation when I talk about the member data, uh, the truth of the matter is, is when I was a club operator, I was one of these people that I would overserve the members. Um, I was, uh, I believe that um, uh, if a member saw a, a speck of dust or a piece of trash on the floor one day and it was there the next day, that they would think, okay, they never cleaned the club. And so we would, we would always make it a point to really interact with the members because um, I always took their experience to the club very personally. And I also knew from experience that clubs that had a big active membership bases that came in and worked out a lot um, were the result of an interactive staff more than anything and, and kept a good clean facility. And um, I also knew that uh, uh, a lot of people and a lot of different populations of people require that level of interaction in order to stay uh, excited about a club. And, you know, uh, I'm probably about eight pounds overweight right now, and you do something about that. But if I gain another eight pounds right now, um, then I start getting in a position where it's, it's unhealthy and might affect the longevity of my life. If I run a club that isn't, uh, uh, it doesn't connect and interact with the members at the right level, well, you know what? I know that I'm not going to have as many um, members working out every day, and if that actually occurs, then people give up on their, uh, their goals of staying fit, and well, they may not live as long. And so when I was working the club, I always thought that I've got to interact with this person and keep them excited about working out here because I may be responsible for them not living as long if I don't keep, take my responsibility as owning a club as seriously as I should. So I always looked at it as I'm saving people's lives by running the club. It's crazy, but I really did think that way. And I think that if we take our jobs to that level, then, uh, then we actually have a chance of extending people's lives. And so that's what I saw my place in the universe when I when I ran my clubs is this is what I was giving back to them. So when I talk about the data analysis and data mining, I don't want you to think that it's just this cold analysis of how many dollars can we get out of a member because it actually creates a win-win scenario because we're in a, a free market society. And one of the things I really do love about the free market is that um, you're benefited for doing things that people want, okay? If uh, in, uh, I own, own a software company now, well, if I don't deliver quality software and great customer support and you know a number you can call and somebody answers the phone and all that good stuff, I'm going to lose a customer. But if I provide those things and I keep a customer or I get a new customer because of it, then I, I make more money and I have a happy customer. So it's a very symbiotic relationship. So when we talk about ways to maximize profit out of people, it's not like we're just taking money out of their pocket and accessing their network against their will. What we're really doing is we're getting permission to do that. We're getting them excited about wanting to, to spend money, products and services, buying those products and services from us over someone else because we know the involvement in that community in our facility is just that. It's not just a place to work out anymore. And Ray Wilson, he always thought of a member as just get that money stream in here. He didn't care whether or not they worked out or not. People didn't think about that back then. They just wanted the stream. Now we have an opportunity to create a community, to work the network, and it's to the benefit and the potential life longevity of the member. So I think it's a win-win situation. I hope you guys see that uh, a little bit and not so much just the cold aspect of, okay, let's talk about data. Um, I am the actually owner of the uh, Go Figure software company, but the truth of the matter is the software was never my passion. Uh, this passion was always uh, interacting with people in the club and taking care of the members, and the software was actually an outcropping of that because I hated spending time in the office. I, I thought all staff members should be out there interacting with members all the time. And every time we were actually back in the office futzing around with some piece of data or paperwork, I thought this is, this is the wrong place we, we actually make money. We actually make money and, and do good for our members when we're out there. So I started the software company because I wanted to save time, not because I had a love for computers. Okay. I was going to talk a little bit about some data entry practices here. Um, having, uh, uh, and I bring multiple perspectives to the industry, not only from the club operational side and membership sales. I mean, I could, I could do everything. I run a club with my eyes closed. Um, but from the data entry side, we get to see some very interesting things when we actually interact with our customers and data entry practices. Whenever somebody actually starts using our software, we make a really big deal to get them trained because it's very frustrating to us, not because we get anything out of it, but it's frustrating to us when people don't use the software right. And the very first thing that people make a mistake on when they don't use the software correctly is they don't enter in data correctly. And they really do miss out on a, a great opportunity um, to do a lot of cool things later on. And it's always harder to go back and correct bad data entry practice problems. 
And for instance, uh, when we look at a person's database, our, our software does you know, everything you got to do to run a health club, basically. Um, and I go in there and I'll sometimes see somebody's data where they just put in the person's name, the date they joined, how much they pay in dues, and their key tag number. And, you know, we use the software just to track payments and attendance. And I'm like, why are you paying me? You know, I mean, seriously, you could do that on a pen and paper and save yourself the money. Don't use the software. I mean, I'm glad you're using the software. I mean, I'm able to pay my staff and stay in business, and that's cool, but it doesn't make me feel good about what I'm doing for you. And so what I want you to do is I want you to take a little bit more seriously. And in the industry, we, you probably heard, this, this term's been around for a long time. It's called GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. If you're not putting in the, the right amount of data or good enough data, you can't get anything out of it. And so there are many pieces of data that we could enter and take advantage of. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, it takes a little longer to enter the data in the right time. And so what I suggest is, if, uh, and I, I, I and, and try to introduce myself to a few, few of you, and I don't really know the size of your facilities, but I get the thing they're a little bit larger clubs uh, than probably what I'm used to operating because I was the curves owner for a long time. Um, but... Uh, uh, I would try to have at least one or two people who specialize in just entering the member data in there and getting as much of the data as, as correct as you possibly can um, because uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how you're going to be able to uh, make that work for you later on. Okay. I'm going to try to read this to you guys. I have the lights on here. I know that it's harder to see this. Asking for a certain piece of information help better, uh, better relationship. And it's how well do you know your member? Uh, the, the really, the only time I found, I'm not going to say the only time, I, I, I don't like to use the words only, always, and never, but in, in, in reality, when you're operating your business and you're getting information from members, really the only time you're ever going to have that opportunity to get member information from a member is when they join, okay? You can't really go back two months, three months later on and, and get more information. And so that time that you're, you're signing them up, asking for the data, and then the person that enters that data in the computer, however that process works in your facility, is you have to make sure you ask the right questions. Their name, obviously, but their birthday, their employer, habits, what are their goals, how they hear about you, things of this nature. You may want to even start asking questions like, you know, hey, do you guys, uh, at, after you've already signed them up, and take a little questionnaire, where do you like to shop? Do you go to Starbucks? Do you go to you know, Hobby Lobby? And these kind of things, because I'm going to show you how you could actually start taking advantage of their buying habits outside of the club to supplement their experience at your club and supplement the cost of their club as well. And so part of it is just taking the first step and getting that data in there correctly and knowing how to answer the questions, um, <clears throat> knowing, knowing which questions to ask actually. And so I, I, when, you, when you sign up somebody now, um, I think that many people's thought process is just, okay, I want to get the sale. Okay, and then maybe if you're a, a good salesperson or a little bit more aggressive, you might have a presentation that you could do some upselling for personal training or, or, or like that right then and there. And um, I think in our facilities, uh, we had a 95% closing average. If somebody walked through the door, there was a 95% chance they were going to join. Okay, and, uh, and I think part of the reason was, was not only that our sales process, but w we asked a lot of questions about who they were when they joined. This is before, this is back in the late 90s before I even really fully appreciated the extent to data farming and how value that could be, valuable that could be to your club. Uh, we started asking a lot of questions. And if you ask the questions in the right way, the member really does appreciate it because it starts to build a relationship with them, you know. Why are you in here? What do you want to accomplish today? Well, you know, I want to look better and feel better. Really? Why? Why do you want to look better, feel better? Why does that matter to you? And you ask them questions about like that as to what motivated, what makes them tick. And after you get the membership, well, let me ask you a couple of questions. What do you like to do? You know, when I first came in here today, um, we have a videographer here, Tom, okay? And uh, I just met him today. He's a great guy. If you ever want to meet some interesting guy, I've only known him for an hour, and I'll tell you, I really like this guy. But one of the things he did uh, to try to make me feel comfortable and chose his experience is he started asking me all these questions about me. What do you like to do? What are your hobbies? You know, um, and, and I'm like, oh, I don't know this guy from Adam, but he started asking me all these questions. I could see right away this guy was a professional. And in an hour, I've, I've met videographers and audio video people and presentation and booth people all over the place today and, and, and all walks that I do around the world. I'll remember this guy forever. And we have that same opportunity when we're signing somebody up to ask them the questions 
and get them to remember us. So it's a very critical point. We're getting to know them to create the relationships. It's about asking them out of the, the data that we need to do the farming later on. But I want you guys to also think about how do we ask these questions to start creating the relationship so that when I see Tom five years from now in some crazy event somewhere, I'm going to remember his name. Okay? When that person comes in your club, you're going to re remember their name. Now, the funny thing about me, actually, is I'm really bad at names. I'm terrible at it. It's, kind of a, it's a freakish thing. I, I remember one time when I, when I just got out of college, uh, I was in, went to real estate. And um, I'm one of these people that thinks about three and four things at the same time. And I used to think I, I was going nuts. I'm like, God, how is it that my brain is actually thinking, streaming three things at the same time? The problem is, is I forget people's names and faces. And so I went to go put a person's house on the market. And I was in their house talking to husband and wife for an hour. Okay, I'm like 23, 24 years old. I got the listing. I walked out of the house. I'm putting the sign in the yard. And it just occurred to me, I didn't know what they looked like. I'm like, oh, I was just talking to that person for an hour. I'm, I'm, I'm out of my mind. And so one of the very first things I built into our software when I was designing it was I want to know who the heck was coming to my club. I want to know their face, their name. So for an, an example of an, an immediate benefit of, of data farming is uh, when somebody scans their key tag, their name and their picture shows up. And that was designed, I put that in there for me. And my wife said, why did you do that? I was like, I had to have it in there, honey. I, I couldn't tell anybody's name. I felt bad. You know, I signed up somebody and I made her cry. Uh, because she was so excited about joining and I forgot her name the next day. So uh, I just started calling people dear and oh come here love, you know, and all this kind of face name. It was terrible. Uh, so I put that in there, but that's one of the things that we could do just very simply is name face recognition and when somebody scans in and just calling them by name. And so that was just a very immediate gratification thing that you can do and, um, uh, and I think that people in your club should take advantage of. Now increasing the membership retention um, and I, and I, that is like the, the buzzword. Everybody wants to talk about member retention. And there are companies that exist today that do quite well that have actually uh, built themselves around the entire concept of member retention. We have companies that have gone out there and designed themselves and created a, a business model around just getting you members in your club. We have ones that gone out there and go and create a, a company around just keeping your members longer because now we're starting to know the value of all these things. Um, a friend of mine, a guy I like, and he's giving a presentation tomorrow. He's got a booth here and I don't get anything out of uh, plugging him. His name is uh, Rich Ekstrom. He's with Retention Management. And one of the things that he does is he's got a program that actually farms your data. He integrates to many uh, club management software. So if you don't use me, that's cool. I don't, I don't, I got lots of customers, but if you got uh, anybody else and they, they use retention management, I recommend that because what his system actually does is it analyzes the attendance patterns of your members. And based upon their attendance patterns, how new they are and all these things, it sends out an email to them and it's, and it feels very professional and personal. So when they join, they get a welcome to the family email. And then with every two weeks or every week, I can't remember, they get an email. Hey, it's good to drink water. And hey, good job on coming into the club. You, you're keeping it up. And if they change their attendance patterns, like if they drop off, it sends them an email warning them about breaking a bad habit you know, or breaking a good habit. You know, it takes 21 days to create a good habit, seven days to break it. We saw that you didn't make it in. We're worried about you. Is everything OK? Is there anything we can do? And so it takes the data farming, data mining, out of your hands. I thought that was a, it's a great concept. I like his concept, his, com his company, and he's a great guy. And it's a very simple uh, way to keep members connected. And so we'll see some of the uh, uh, email replies that the members will give on to his uh, emails that he gets, sends out. And they say, oh, thank you. It was so awesome. You know, look, my, my daughter sprained her ankle. and We were in the emergency room. And you're right. I'm going to come back in there and, and start working out. And so um, uh, people really appreciate it. 